Now, our final discussion, and it's a controversial one. The British Medical Association will this week be discussing whether to update the abortion laws and extend the current time limit. Well, the existing time limit is 24 weeks uh, from conception. Even then, two doctors must agree that continuing the pregnancy would be harmful for either the woman or the unborn child. In Northern Ireland, the law is much stricter. Terminations are only permitted if a woman's life is at risk or there is a permanent or serious risk to her mental or physical health. But the BMA conference, which starts today in Bournemouth, will debate whether women should be allowed to terminate their pregnancy right up until the due date, and for any reason. Well, joining the panel now are Kate Smirthwaite, a feminist uh, activist, active, activist even, and comedian. Uh, that was quite funny. Caroline Farrow, a Catholic broadcaster and writer. And we are rejoined by the sociologist Ben Carrington and the journalist Ruth Dudley Edwards. Well, Kate, I'll start with you. Mm -hmm. um, get your title right this time as well. Now, the current law gives enough time for uh, someone uh, to choose whether or not they want to have their baby. Surely 24 weeks is enough time? Well, I mean, absolutely. For the vast majority of women, you know, of course. And, and in actual fact, when we look at women who have terminations, the vast majority have them a long, long time before that, because typically what's happening is, you know, your period doesn't show up and you go, oh, no, I really need some help. This is not what I want. And there's plenty of time to sort that out. But, you know, there's a tiny number of women for whom the problem arises after 24 weeks and they tend to be in the most extreme circumstances for example women who were too young to be having periods at the time that the abuse started and so they don't realize that they can get pregnant they may not even know anything about the facts of life and they're being abused they find out they're pregnant at 25 weeks and what what ends up happening a lot of course is that they get taken out of the UK to another country where the law um, doesn't have the 24 week limit and you know and, and that's and that's horrific these are these are women who've gone through all sorts of awful things so what we're, not, what we're not saying is, hey, we all want to keep on having abortions up until, um, you know, the end of the, the pregnancy term. What we're saying is that this is a difficult decision and the decision shouldn't therefore be made by the government or the authorities. The decision should be made privately between a woman and her doctor having a sensible conversation with all the facts in front of them and making a decision about what's right for her. Would you set a time limit, though? Um, I don't think that that's... I, don't, I think, again, that's a conversation to have with okay. a, between a woman and her doctor. I mean, I mean, for me, sure, there, there would be a point where I wouldn't feel comfortable with it, but, but, but so for me to push that onto somebody yeah. else, no, not at all. Caroline, should it ever be a crime for a woman to do uh, what she wants to do with her body? Well, you have to remember that in the case of a, an abortion or a pregnant woman, the baby is not the woman's body. It has a separate uh, DNA. It's a completely separate and independent of, of the woman. It doesn't even have a parasitic relationship. It's its own individual. So it's not just a question of what a woman does with her body, but actually the rights of the unborn child, because every single... Uh, embryology text but what we know undisputed scientific fact is that human life is formed uh, at conception and therefore what happens uh, after that is a, a matter of great social uh, and moral public interest it's it's not actually a private matter human life is That's... formed at conception Emma well we're joined now by dr. Matthew Pacava a GP working in Suffolk good morning to you just briefly what is the process for getting an abortion in Britain well, for, for the vast majority, at least, uh, of the cases that I see, a uh, woman will uh, discover that she's pregnant fairly early on, come and see me, we'll have a discussion about what she'd like to do with the pregnancy, and then it's, um, it's a fair amount of paperwork, um, a bit from me, uh, filling in what is a fairly an antiquated piece of paperwork, really, referred on to a, a, a clinic, usually at the local hospital, further discussions with another doctor, some counselling, and then appointments and methods discussed from there. And Matthew, what would you make of the argument that women come in and actually they sometimes take those decisions lightly, they haven't really thought about what they want? I, I would struggle to agree with that because many people I meet who are coming in to talk about a termination of pregnancy have thought long and hard about this before they've even booked their appointment with me. And so uh, I, I would struggle to find uh, a case, case in my experience you know, it's not, not everybody, but um, where that, uh, that decision hasn't been uh, thoroughly thought through and discussed with uh, loved ones and friends and family, partners, etc. Right. And, and what do you make of the protesters who stand outside abortion clinics? That's a site we're seeing more and more of in the UK. Uh, yeah, it's a difficult question. We have, uh, you know, the right to discuss our opinions as such. As a doctor, my job is, is not to be a barrier to the care uh, of, of a woman in need. And if we look at some of the sort of historical cases, what people did in the past in order to procure abortion, 
I think the harms of having a, a, a medical termination or surgical termination are much less than the potential harms that could be caused by uh, home methods and septic abortions and all those sorts of things. The, the horror stories that you heard and, and the deaths that resulted from that. And, and if, if, if the law was changed to allow abortion for any reason right up to the due date or later than we have at the moment, do you think we'd see a rise? in those I, abortions? I'm not convinced we would because the, the number of abortions that occur are the, the about 80 to probably even 90 percent occur before 13 weeks at least in the most recent data I've seen a very small proportion occur after that date um, for things such as serious uh, uh, deformity and, and uh, to the um, uh, developing fetus and also um, potential significant harms to, to the woman's and those are I think measuring in the hundreds per year, so actually a fairly small amount given the, the total number of abortions that we see. Dr Matthew Picarver, thank you for telling us what you've seen in your GP surgery there, Sean. Emma, thank you. Ruth, can you appreciate why some people think abortion is acceptable, especially in the early stages? Oh yes, I can. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm wishy-washy on this. I, I hate it. I hate everything I know about it, and yet I wouldn't for one moment insist that somebody had been raped or somebody in terrible trauma shouldn't be allowed to have abortion but what I would say that I think we should agree on as a country is first of all you should never abort a viable baby I think that is atrocious I can't see the difference between that and straightforward murder so there's a moral difference between a collection of cells and when it becomes a fetus oh yes I can see that difference yeah. but I mean I, we're talking about actually now children that are viable being aborted that is monstrous and it is also monstrous is it not to kill off fetuses because they're of one sex or another mm. one gender K or another K Kate, obviously see, in yeah moment. this 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 comes up every time when we start to talk about abortion is this discussion of uh, rape of incest of and what we end up having is this conversation about the inverted commas right reasons for abortion and, and I say to that two things firstly um, I, I don't I don't I, I guess I look at it from a different perspective um, if we look at abortion from the other angle, we're actually saying what are the right reasons to force a woman to be pregnant against her will? And to me, that is a cruel and unusual and unreasonable punishment. Um, secondly, I am somebody who has had a termination, and um, actually I had a termination uh, overseas in a country with different, different rules, and I didn't know what the rules were when I realised that I was pregnant and I didn't want to be. Um, and I can tell you now, whatever the law had been, whatever the circumstances that abortion was available, I would have gone in and said, yes, that's me. If they'd said only if you've been raped, I would have said I'd been raped. If they said only, um, you know, if you fit the following medical criteria, I would have said yes. Only if you're over whatever age, yes, I would have lied about my age. There was nothing I wouldn't have lied about. So I feel like when we put these restrictions on abortion, you may hear, here's some, you know, good advice to give people, but what I hear is go and lie to your doctor. And that's never good advice. That's always a bad place uh, to start from. Ben, should the law ever get involved in this? Yeah, of course it has to be involved. I think the problem is sometimes we frame this as being for or against abortion. I mean, I would assume that everyone's against abortions. That's the starting point there. They're traumatic uh, experiences for the, for the woman involved. But you know, presumably we're against heart attacks as well. The question is when it happens, should the medical profession, should the person who's, who's been involved have the right to decide then what happens? And, and absolutely. And I think we've, be, we've become fixated on this 24 weeks figure I mean, this, this kind of period. The key question is to decriminalise abortion in the first place and that's a bigger part of this. And the other part of it is that often these discussions aren't really around abortion. Like coming from the US, these are often around women's rights, women's health care. And you see in, in a state like Texas where there's been a, a tremendous attack on, on women's right to get access to abortion that their health care uh, provision has fallen apart. Texas has some of the worst infant and maternal mortality rates in the Western world and it's directly connected to the religious rights attack on the rights of women to have abortions. Ben, it's a, a mix of views here, a uh, mix of views at home as well. Yes, well, one here from Helen, which is unequivocal. If you believe it's wrong to kill a three-year-old child, you can't say it's right to kill one at six weeks gestation. Either we all have the right to life or no one does. Karen adds, in the UK, women can have an abortion up to 24 weeks. I think this is already too high. The fetus can feel pain well below that limit. And moving across to the Northern Irish picture, Edith says Northern Irish women who come to the mainland absolutely should be covered by the NHS. Access to abortions should be a human right. Sean? Access to abortions should be a human right. A mix of views there. Caroline, what do you make of them? 
Well, it's, 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 it's really encouraging, actually, to see uh, both Ben admitting that abortion is a tragedy and, you know, one of your viewers admitting you know, the, right, the right to life. And interestingly, there was a ComRes poll carried out in um, just a couple of weeks ago in May, and it showed that actually our legislation is out of step with public opinion and seriously out of step. So 70% of women who were polled w think that the current uh, abortion limit of 24 weeks is too high. Interestingly, over 91% of women want to see sex-selective abortion illegal. Now, when Parliament had a chance to vote on it, they, they said, no, no, we'll keep it as it is. So technically, someone can uh, abort a baby because it's the wrong sex. Other interesting things, this... Um, 79% of women want to see a mandatory five-day consultation period uh, before a woman uh, has an abortion. And another, I think it was over 76%, want to make sure that um, two doctors sign off on it to make sure a woman's not coerced. We talk about safe legal abortion. We have to remember that... Last year, the Care Quality Commission, who regulates abortion clinics, actually temporarily shut down Mary Stopes. And they also uh, produced a damning report against BPAS in, in Merseyside. You know, and these were serious issues. Yeah, I I'm going to have to cut across you because I, you've got 10 seconds for a reply for that, Kate. <laughs> Literally, 10 seconds. Um, it, the situation is, yes, you can find one poll that shows all sorts of things. The bottom line is, when we put these restrictions on abortion, like the two doctor's signatures, like the thing in Northern Ireland, women travelling over every week, what actually happens is that women who are wealthy, uh, you know, well-educated and have freedom, well, they will travel and they will get the service that they want. All these restrictions do is put limitations on poor and working-class women and women in difficult situations, and I think that... You you know, that that's that it's a classist policy to restrict abortion uh, that was more than 10 seconds but it was good thank you very <laughs> much a good yeah. debate as well thanks uh, that's uh, nearly all from us this week many thanks to all our guests and to you at home for your contributions but why don't you join emma for a live chat online after the show yes i'll be talking to sarah credis about space exploration so come on boldly go with me to facebook.com forward slash bbc sunday morning live lift off on that one uh, very shortly in the meantime goodbye from everybody on sunday morning live